what happens next? If we travel down the cosmological arrow of time, what's next for us? Is there a big crunch, a big chill, a heat death of the universe or something else? Well, again, we don't know the answer to that. We have to extrapolate. And that means we have to make some assumptions about theory. Yeah. Uh, the simplest extrapolation from what we're observing is a heat death. Um, so uh, it's that the universe will continue to expand and actually the rate of expansion will continue to accelerate. So dark energy would be a cosmological constant. That's the most kind of parsimonious explanation we have for the current data. And if that's correct, um, we will eventually reach a state where all stars will have run out of fuel and burned out. Um, the Milky Way galaxy will be by itself, or it will have maybe a few other galaxies that are bound to it. But um, a small group of galaxies will be by will be by themselves. Everything else will have gone beyond the horizon. That state will persist for an unimaginably long time. So everything will be cold and will be quite quite boring. But at least there's these sort of dead stars and ice planets and so on. If you wait a really, really ridiculously long time, even that will cease to exist because there's an incredibly rare quantum tunneling event where um, an object which is gravitationally bound to another object can tunnel to a point far enough away where it's no longer bound and gets pulled away by this accelerated expansion. So the ultimate future of this, like on absurdly long time scales, is every indivisible particle is by itself in a huge empty universe. And then if you wait an even more ridiculously long time, as it turns out, the theory of the cosmological constant seems to predict that there's a non-zero temperature. It's just like black holes are not actually black. They, they Hawking radiate. They have a little bit of temperature. Um, accelerating universes have event horizons, which are much like black holes, except that they're inside out. They surround us. Those horizons are never totally cold. So there's a tiny amount of temperature and energy associated with those horizons. And... Um, the paper you mentioned before, this disturbing implications of the cosmological constant, the point was in a situation like that, um, where you have a, a tiny amount of energy and, and, and you know, energy is accessible always, eventually any state which ever existed will recur. It will come to exist again. Maybe not quite exactly the same state, but a state that's arbitrarily close to the one you're interested in. These are called Poincaré recurrences. These really are examples where the laws of thermodynamics break down. Um, but on absurdly long time scales and in an understandable way, unlike the cyclic universes. So instead of getting a cyclic universe, you get a quasi periodic one where on these super long time scales, um, if you specify a state, the one we're in now, you'll be able to find infinitely many instances of it ridiculously far in the future and actually in the past where something very close to that state existed. So this could be an imprint of a previous state. Yeah, but it's. But the time scales are so long. So the time scale is like the double exponential of an enormous number. Uh, it, it's, it's like, it's hard to even explain how big this but number infinity, is. infinity, what does that matter? Well, right. right. So <laughs> exactly. So in that paper, we explored the consequences yeah. of this and we found them rather disturbing. And interestingly, since you raised a creator, uh, the idea of a creator, that paper has been quoted as a proof of the existence of God. And I personally think it's a pretty good one. If you're going to try to argue for the existence of God, there are some numbers in that paper that you could say, this is the probability. And the argument doesn't actually quite hold up, but um, it's a pretty good try. So it's in some books by creationist scientists and so on. 